Intel's first products were memory products, both static and dynamic uh, memory chips. In fact, Intel pretty much pioneered the dynamic memory chip. The company was in that business uh, for at least a dozen years, and Intel probably made its, its first pivot, some might say its biggest pivot, when it exited the dynamic memory business and committed itself 100% to microprocessors. This is a momentous decision for Intel. It took the senior management really several years to embrace it. I mean, these are the, the founders of the company. I mean, this is Gordon Moore, this is Bob Noyce, Andy Grove. I mean, these are the people who built Intel and saw it as a memory company. And to suddenly be talking about reinventing the company as a microprocessor company and abandoning more than a decade of work and market leadership in memory is just crazy. But I, I think if you talk to people at the time, they'll say almost the entire organization in their mind had made the switch and senior management sort of had to be dragged along kicking and, and screaming. The decision was really driven by the advent of the personal computer. Microprocessors were starting to displace other forms of computing. I mean, it's at the small scale initially, but you could just extrapolate. I mean, the microprocessor is the foundation for the information economy. Nothing that we know today, whether you're talking about smartphones, automobiles, you know, none of these products would look and act and be capable of the things they do if it were not for the existence of the microprocessor. So Intel, uh, I think, very quickly becomes the microprocessor company. Its name becomes synonymous with microprocessors. And pretty soon, you know, microprocessors are everywhere. And if you were looking for a smart investment, Intel was that company. And I think it did extremely well for investors. There's just no question about it. So there's another pivot in the works, and that's really changing the company at its core in the sense that we've always been a technology-driven company. We build the best transistors, we put those in the best processors, we supply software that, that makes it easy to use those chips. But we really haven't thought about ultimately what kind of experience we want all that technology to deliver to the user. And I think these days what we see is that the consumer wants a solution to a problem, wants to enjoy using that solution, wants to relate to that solution, wants to fall in love with that bit of technology. And to do that, we really have to change the way we do design. We have to come at it from the point of view of the user and the experience we want that user to have. We've been working on a project that would allow you to try clothes on without ever leaving your living room. There's enormous technology, obviously, to, to put a virtual dress on you, but you have to package that technology in such a way that that potential future consumer enjoys the, the process, right? If it's too glitchy, that's not a good experience. And that's the pivot that's underway right now. It's affecting the company top to bottom, and I think in a few years from now, as the first of the products that are influenced by that radical change in, in approach, I think we'll see a very different reaction and a very different perception of what Intel is delivering in terms of technology.